Are you curious about what the deal is with these Google appointment booking pages? And maybe you're wondering like, how does it all work? How does it look? And you wish that there was a video that gave you the inside scoop before you actually dive in and start setting it up yourself. If that's the case, you have made it to the right video. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com, and on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, tech, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, we're gonna dive into Google appointment booking pages. Basically, I'm just gonna bring you behind the scenes and show you how I set one of mine up, some little tricks that I've been able to find and kind of just like the overall inside scoop of how they work and maybe how you can use them too. So let's kick it into the screen share. Okay, so at the time of this recording, this is what the appointment scheduling, the the appointment booking pages like sign up page looks like I will leave a link to this below in the video description box but essentially what you can do is when you're here you're gonna click the get started or whatever the button says for you you're gonna have a drop down here do you want to use it for personal use or for work and business and I'm pretty sure don't quote me on this but I'm pretty sure that if you have like a free Google account that you are gonna be able to use it for personal use but if you want to use it for work or business you're gonna have to have have and like pay for Google Workspace. So I already pay for Google Workspace so I can set it up for work or business, but we're just going ahead and click for personal use and kind of see what happens. So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to bring you over to your Google Calendar and then you're going to see this like left hand option here. This is essentially like setting up your booking system. Okay. So as you can see, you can add a title, like what the heck do you want these appointments to be called? How long should they be? This is your general availability. How often you want to go ahead and repeat them. You can get custom here. You can do all of this. You can set the, the time based on the day. Definitely make sure that this is the correct time zone because things could get a little sticky if you mess this up. And then you can choose the scheduling window. So like how far in advance you want people to be able to book. And then this is where it gets really important, especially for me, where it's like sometimes it's like, yeah, we might have general availability here, but like sometimes I need to adjust availability based on a specific day. So you can click on this and then essentially choose a specific day and then it will allow you to adjust your time slots or remove it completely and say that you're completely unavailable on that specific day. So I think that that's really helpful. You also have the option to add buffer time in between appointment slots. If you want like a max number of bookings per day and you know, guest permissions, all of that. And then we can choose which calendar you want to make sure that Google is actually pulling your availability from if you have different Google calendars, okay? The other thing is you, you can add co-hosts, to be honest, I've tried to do this and I have had nothing but problems. So maybe I'm not doing it correct. I also am not sure. So maybe if you're sure, if you figure it out, please leave me a comment below this video. Maybe we can only add co-hosts if they have the same domain name, email address type thing. I'm not sure. Okay, so if you can let me know, that would be fantastic. But essentially, go ahead and click next right there. And then you can make sure that your booking photo and name is what you'd like it to be. This is where you can set up the location. So you can choose if you want to do a Google Meet, an in-person meeting, a phone call, specified later, all of those options. This is the description. So this is essentially like the information that your people will see in the meeting description after they book. So like this is the description that will stay on their calendar. So I always like putting like important links in here in case they need them. Like if I'm using Zoom, I'll put the Zoom link, all of that. And then we have the booking form. So automatically you can get their first name, last name, and email address, and then you can add a custom item here if you want them to fill out something else that's more specific. And then a cool feature that I wasn't sure if they were gonna go ahead and do, but you're allowed to take payments for these bookings. So that's really helpful. I haven't messed around with this, but it looks like it connects pretty easily to Stripe. And then the booking confirmations and reminder by default, it will email the people that sign up one day before, but you can go ahead and add numerous reminders, remove the reminders, all of that fun stuff, and then just go ahead and click save. So once the like booking appointment 
appointment scheduler thing is set up on your calendar, you should be able to see these little boxes here. And so this is the scheduler that I set up for booking guests on my podcast. So if we click on that, you'll be able to see kind of like how I use it. But if we want to edit it after, we can go ahead and just click this like little pencil icon right there and you can go ahead and edit everything. Okay, so just click next. You can see I put, I still at the time of this recording am still using Zoom. I might end up changing that. But essentially in order to put the Zoom link in there. I just said in-person meeting, put the Zoom link, and then doubled up on putting the Zoom link in the meeting description too. And then I went and added just like another email reminder. I like the day before and 30 minutes before. You can go ahead and adjust as necessary. So if we want to go ahead and share this booking scheduler link with people, you can click on it and then you can click open booking page right here. It will open it up. And this is kind of how you can see what other people see. You can click this button, like see what others see just to double check and make sure. If you have, if you set up like numerous booking pages or like different kinds of appointments, you can click that button there and it will take you to all of the like different appointment schedulers that you have set up. So that's really helpful. You can also click the share button right here and then you have some options that you can play with. So I always recommend testing things out before you start sending them to people. So when you want to view your scheduler, just make sure that everything looks good. Double check like your time zone, double check your appointment options, double check that like the links and everything work and all of that stuff. Double check it all. Okay, y'all like details matter. Details matter a lot. Okay, so all of that, but I wanted to show you something that like a little trick that I learned that I thought was interesting. So the way that you can create like these appointment schedulers, there's different ways to do it. So you can do it by going back to like the online appointment scheduler homepage, or you can basically just look at your calendar and you can click create and then appointment schedule and that will create a scheduler for you or you can go ahead and like write on your calendar you can actually click and drag and like create an appointment slot right there and then when this box pops up you can click appointment schedule edit some things here, and then you can add the availability to an existing schedule, or you can create a new appointment schedule based on like the time slot that you went and you opened. So those are some fun little tricks that I learned as I was kind of like diving in and exploring this, but hopefully now you have like an inside look at how the Google appointment booking pages look, how the schedule functions, and you can make a decision if you think that this option will work best for you. So that's it for today's tutorial. If you you guys found this video helpful give me a really quick thumbs up truly the simple thumbs up does go a long way in letting the youtube algorithm know that my video is helpful and therefore hopefully pushing it out to more people that also might find it helpful and if you have any questions about these google appointment booking pages or anything like that or if after diving in you have found some tricks or figured something out that i didn't know definitely leave me a comment below this video i use your comments your feedback and your suggestions for new videos on the channel. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the next video.